and that's it struck me that really is one of the glories of this of this piece is that it seems to be narrative and it's often about uh sort of wonderfully ordinary things water pipes pigeons although in the context of of post-war mosul dead bodies uh so a slightly surreal kind of mm -hmm. of of, uh, of of normality uh but that the narrative in fact has embedded in it or hidden in it these these larger uh larger themes and and larger messages that's that's why i think it was so brilliant jane uh, let me uh come back to you for a moment um what was it like being out in baghdad working with uh, with these uh, uh, folks at long distance uh as they shaped your work it was great um you know pod it was the first podcast i've ever done and it's very different isn't it from from the kind of journalism we normally do it's much 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 broader and and i had never done and michael may was um with me in baghdad in sorry in mosul for those but i i had never done interviews that went on for three hours uh, it was a really interesting way to do things. I think for me, the beauty of it and, and part of the reason I love doing it is I learned so much about the craft and, and you all just crafted it beautifully and made me think about things in a way, I suppose in a deeper way that I hadn't thought about it. So it was it was quite an amazing experience. A long distance is not great, you know, the time difference, the, yeah, all of that, um, it's, it kind of takes a bit of a toll, but, but overall it was, um, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, are there lessons that you learned for your own work and are there lessons from this episode, and then I'll want to ask it in a broader sense, that, that you, uh, you'd like to pass on to other um, other foreign correspondents, other reporters in general, aspiring correspondents? Yeah, I think we have to recognize that we are extraordinarily lucky. We were extraordinarily lucky. Not only do we have amazingly talented people, we had the infrastructure where we could follow a thread. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time freelancing as well, and I see a lot of freelancers out there working so hard without the support, without the infrastructure, and it's so much harder. So for us, because you have to be really persistent, right? I mean, when the governor, who is a key part of this, who is trying to stop this young nurse from picking up bodies and threatened to arrest her, um, wouldn't talk to us, we basically had to stalk him we you know we figured out where he would be we talked to his security people we waited for him we went back over and over so it reinforced to me the importance of being persistent but to be persistent you have to have an organization that backs you or you have to have some sort of support mechanism i think i i would say the most valuable thing to do in a place like a post-war city is just to go and walk around and knock on doors and talk to strangers and just kind of soak it in and don't be too jaded, you know? I think what I had to fight was that absolute, that feeling like, oh my God, this is the end of the world. I mean, the destruction, the loss, the tragedy, the, the fact nobody was doing anything except these young people. But then there were these people who were taking extraordinary risks to make their city better. And I think without an open mind, um, maybe I wouldn't have been able to see that quite so much. And also, I know this sounds corny, but I, I think also with, you kind of need an open heart as well to believe that people can actually accomplish the kind of things that these people were doing because they really were extraordinary. They are extraordinary. Yeah. And one of the amazing things, Jane, is, is that you've been, you've been visiting Iraq and sometimes living in Iraq for, uh, for more than two decades. Iraq is a very difficult country. It's 
difficult place to operate. Lots of things difficult about it, even even when it's not at war, um, and you somehow haven't become jaded. What is what is the secret of your uh, <laughs> uh, uh, of your inner peace? Gosh, I'm not sure if I have inner peace, um, but I, I do feel sort of driven to keep telling these stories because, as you know, every you know. Someone once said to me, an Iraqi, every Iraqi could write a book or it could be the subject of a movie is how I think of it. And they absolutely could be. You start talking to people in the street and they have these extraordinary stories, stories that would completely leave most people undone if mm -hmm. one of the 10 tragedies ever happened to them. But yet they go on, you know, they get up in the morning, they take care of their kids, they go to school, they try to find jobs, they hold protests. They still have that belief that things can change. Um, I contrast that with another, another country I cover, Egypt, where that's kind of been knocked out of people. And in Egypt, when you interview a lot of people, you, you sense the fear in their eyes. That doesn't exist so much now in Iraq. And it is uh, what keeps me drawn to that place is that every time I go there and every person I talk to pretty much, I learn something and my eyes are opened again.